Hey everyone, it's time for Bible study. This is Pastor Tony from Grace Fellowship. Uh, we're going to give everyone a few minutes to chime in, and uh, we're going to be talking about walking by faith tonight. Just uh, kind of doing a recap, but, but also just going with the flow of the Holy Spirit to remind us about how to walk by faith and not by sight. I see Bernadette's chimed in, so praise God. Good evening, Bernadette. We're going to give a few more minutes for other people. Raymond and Ricky's here with me tonight for Bible study. So if you hear their voices, it's their voices and not any other voices. Uh, praise God. But anyway, we're going to give people a few minutes and then we'll get started. Let's go ahead and pray while we're waiting for people to tune in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that the blood of Jesus covers and protects each and every one of us. And Lord, I thank you for giving us ears to hear what your spirit has to say tonight. Thank you so much for everything that you do for us, Lord. Uh, we thank you that tonight as we sit under your word that we will receive greater revelation, more revelation, and apply it to our lives so that we all can walk by faith and not by sight, and that we can all see results not just one person, but every one of us see the results of applying God's word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I see that Debbie's tuned in. Hey, Debbie, Yolanda, good evening. Praise the Lord. Uh, again, it's great seeing people uh, connecting tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody say I'm blessed? Can, are you blessed? Well, praise the Lord. We're blessed, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All spiritual blessings come from Jesus. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Well, let's go ahead and get started tonight. And like I said, the title of the message is Walking by Faith. And, you know, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, this walk with Jesus is by faith. You know, I didn't see him go to the cross, but I know that he went to the cross because I have faith. I have faith he did. And you don't have to talk me out of it. I know he's gone to the cross. Mm -hmm. I know that he didn't stand the cross, but he rose from the grave. You know, as he left the cross, he was put in the tomb, but he rose from the grave and he's no longer in the grave as well. So we're going to start um, with Hebrews 11.1. 1. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11.1, 1, we all know this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is now. So the Lord has given you a measure of faith, no matter how long you've been in church, or maybe you haven't been to church, but you've accepted Jesus, you have been given a measure of faith to walk by faith. So now faith is, it's now. He's given you faith now. Whatever you're going through, that he's giving you faith for now to overcome it, to get through it, to receive uh, the promises of God or the word of God, to stand on his word. When you read a scripture and it stands out to you, you can say, you know what? I receive that for me or for somebody you're praying for. So faith is now. So now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So faith is substance. It's, it has substance to it. And it says it's substance of things hoped for, and this is the evidence of things not seen. So th that faith, it, believing, well, you know what? I'm believing that I'm going to get through this, but I don't see it yet. I don't see it to the other side. I don't see myself to the other side, but I have faith I'm going to get to the other side. You know, that's where that substance is. It, it's more than wishful thinking or positive thinking. You know, you can be positive and that's great, but you gotta have, uh, uh, you've gotta have faith to get through. It's a spiritual thing, it's substance, it's to get you to the other side or receive the, what God has promised you or the blessing. And so that's what faith is, uh, that's the now faith. And then if you wanted to read more about uh, the faith, we call it the faith chapter, you can read of, um, all of Hebrews 11, about the the ones that walk by faith. They walk their faith out. We get to read about their faith, and it builds our faith, but they were walking out their faith. And so 
The same for us. We're walking out our faith, but we can read about others who have already walked their faith out, and it should build your faith to know that what God did for them, he'll do for you. You know, we were in prayer a few minutes ago, and we were, you know, we were speaking out what the word of God says. It says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, Jesus you, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what Jesus did in the days of the apostle, apostles, he does today. Miracles didn't go away when the apostles passed away. The miracles are continuously happening, yeah. and we need to start uh, anticipating the miracles or remember the miracles that once uh, the ones that the Lord has done already, maybe in your life. Mm -hmm. All of us, I believe, have experienced miracles. You know, what you think is a big miracle or a small miracle, whatever it is, it's still a miracle. Mm -hmm. And so that's what should stir up, stir up your faith in knowing that God is a God of miracles and I'm believing for miracles. It's time to see the miracles happening in the church again yeah. and to the point where people are being raised from the dead or people are being healed right then. You know, limbs uh, are growing back or livers or, you know, kidneys are being restored or, you know, new livers and new kidneys or whatever it is. It, and again, it's by faith you receive. It, it's nothing that you can figure out. It's like, Lord, I need a new liver. And Lord, I'm asking you to give me a new liver. And from now on, I'm going to thank you for my new liver. And so you keep on going to the doctor. You don't stop taking your medicine. You don't stop going to the doctor. But you go to the doctor and let him confirm the word by saying, hey, there's something going on in your body. I don't know why you you don't need to take this liver medicine anymore. There's something happening. Well, you can say, Lord, I thank you for my new liver. Mm -hmm. So faith, again, you can't figure out faith. It's about, you, and it's not blind faith. It's about believing what the word of God says, that by his stripes you've been made whole mm -hmm. for your healing. And And when you read scripture, what it should do, it should build your faith. It should also remind you, of what he did for those in the Bible that he'll do for you. Remember, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. So just remember that now faith is the substance. Faith has substance. Just begin to th think about that. The, the faith that you have, what you're believing God for, has substance to it. There's something about your faith it has that substance to cause that breakthrough or cause that change mm -hmm. you know and again it's more than power you know positive thinking it's faith faith as substance so again now faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so just because you haven't seen it yet doesn't mean it won't happen and that's where we got to take captive every thought and imagination when we're believing God for something and we haven't seen it happen yet, and maybe we're feeling discouraged, that's when you got to take captive that thought and, you know, that yeah. thought and the imagination and to keep your mouth shut. Right, right, <laughs> right. We want to start talking, don't we? Yeah. Well, I guess this isn't working. Or if you get frustrated or mad, well, this doesn't work. Well, don't, you know, remember, the devil wants you to speak against what God has promised. He wants you to act in lack of faith. He doesn't want you to act in faith. He knows the power of faith. That's why he wants to discourage you and cause you to be distracted and, and just throw in the towel. But when you're feeling that, you need to understand the devil knows you're getting close to your breakthrough. That's why he wants you to start talking against what God has promised you. And we've all, the people at this table right now and people watching, you've all seen God move in your life. You've seen, you've, like I said, you've seen miracles. Miracle is that, you know what? Here's a miracle that you were driving down the street and a car almost hit you, but it missed you. And well, that's a miracle. He protected you from that car accident. Amen. Yeah. So we're going to go into John chapter 2. Let's go there real quick. John chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to give you a few minutes, a second to get there. 
Praise the Lord. I believe tonight we're going to be so blessed. We're going to get so much out of this tonight. Lucky, I see that you've tuned in. Good evening. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to walk by faith. Tonight we're going to see faith work on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. So John chapter 2, verse 1. We've read this before. It's when Jesus turned the water into wine. And, and I, I want you to understand uh, that, um, that, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. It was, it was a substance. It was a natural thing. It wasn't just a spiritual thing. It happened in the spirit realm. But think about water being turned into wine. Water and wine. We can see water with our, nat with our eyes, right? We can see wine with our eyes. We can taste water. We can taste wine. We can hold a glass of wine, a glass of water. So these are things that could be every day, you know, use. And something is going to happen. Jesus is going to cause this water to turn, turn into wine by faith, right? So whatever you're believing God for, uh, I want you to understand whatever you need, Whatever you're trusting God for, whether it's healing, whether you need to pay a bill. You know, some people say, oh, here he goes, going to talk about money. Well, you know, I don't, I'm not going to apologize. We need money to pay our bills. I don't want to be in debt for the rest of my life. I don't want you to be in debt for the rest of your life. I don't want you to have to worry about you paying your rent. I don't want you to have to worry about car repairs or all these things. I'm here to tell you what Jesus did with the water being turned into wine. He can turn your situation into something different. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I have a thought. And you just sure. Said, Go you ahead. Just said it right before I said it. Was it Jesus's uh, faith that caused the water turn into wine, or is it because he was just Jesus? I mean, you didn't. Well, I think it's a whole. There's several factors to it. I think not only. It was from Jesus' mother. Um, it was from the servants that took the water up. Let's read about it. And But I think it, there, there's more factors to this. I mean, Jesus could have just waved his hand and said, wine, go take it, you know. But he didn't. There was participants in this. And for you too, you know, we can participate in the miracle. Yeah. So, so let's go John chapter 2, verse 1. And I believe somebody's going to get blessed. I, I'm telling you tonight, I believe something good is going to happen. It says, on the third day of the wedding, uh, it says, on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. It says, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you... Uh, involve me, Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. Now, isn't this interesting? She goes, there's no more wine. And Jesus knows what she's thinking, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, his mother wanted Jesus to do something because to have a wedding or reception or a banquet and you run out of wine, you know, it's all about hospitality. You know, in those days and in some of the cultures it's about hospitality and if you run out of something that brings disgrace on the family because you should be prepared for your guests you're there to be a blessing to your guests and to serve them and if you run out of something it does not make you look good you know and it's a disgrace and so uh jesus's mother knew that it'd be a disgrace on the family and so she goes to jesus and say hey, they ran out of wine. So it tells you, it, you know, it's showing you that she has faith that Jesus can do something, right? Yes. Faith. Absolutely. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. She knew right? the source. Yeah. <laughs> and it was her faith. It was substance. She was touching Jesus with her faith that was substance. It was more than just positive thinking. And, and so let's go on a little bit farther. Yeah, Go ahead. And, sure. You know, was, um, Mary had the faith, and she was operating in faith when she was talking to Jesus, mm -hmm. asking him to do it. 
And she used her faith, put her faith into action exactly. when she told these guys that a pair of these barrels of a pot of water that would turn to wine. She said, do whatever he tells you to do. Yeah. Because she had faith to do it. Yeah. To encourage them, do it. Yeah. Just do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Yeah, they want to yeah. understand the uh, one understand. Right. So let's go on. Praise God. See how faith works? Mm -hmm. How th faith works all things out. And it says here, it says, let me go back to it. It says, dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. And it says, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. She isn't being, you know, it, her faith is working right now. She is not going to let anything stop her faith from making things change. And even when Jesus says, well, my time has not yet come, it's like she didn't even hear him. You know, she starts talking to the servants. Now do what he tells you to do. That's faith. And then let's go on. Nearby stood a, a six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. See, we stop at just a little blessing, don't we? Yeah. You know, our thing is, you know what? If I can just get that pitcher of wine, you know, whatever, at least have a pitcher of wine to be able to pass around. See, I think we are the biggest hindrance to our blessings yeah. because we settle for just enough. Or barely enough. When the Lord is a God, he's the God of overflow. He's the God of more than enough. He wants to bless you so much that you have to give it away. Mm -hmm. You know, how can we show, and I talked about this on Sunday, how can we show the distinction between those who serve the Lord and those who don't unless there is an overflow? More than enough. Not only did he heal my back, but I'm able to leap and bound. I'm able to do cartwheels or whatever it is. And some of us would say, yeah, right. Well, you never know. But but we've got to show the world there's more than just a little dab that gets us through or just enough. He's a God of more than enough. How can we be a blessing to many people? It's great to be a blessing to one person, but I want to be a blessing to many people. I want to show many people how good my God is. I got the joy of the Lord. You know, Raymond, it's funny because you mentioned last week, uh, you know, since I'm not working a secular job, you said, well, Pastor Tony, you look different. You look rested or you look, you know, well, I'm refreshed. Well, yeah, because now I get to spend more time with the Lord and I get to focus on my gift, my calling. And so let's, so praise God. So let's go on a little bit farther. It says, so nearby stood six water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Now, again, I'm going back to Mary's faith. Mm -hmm. You know, her faith is she wanted something to happen. They ran out of wine and they needed more wine. That's basically what she's doing. She says, basically she's saying, they need more wine, they're out of wine. And so here she says to the servants, do what he tells you, and Jesus is doing exactly that. He's giving them instruction, and, and there's these jars of water over to the side, and then Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. Remember, they can hold to 20 to 30 gallons. So Jesus tells them to fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. They didn't just fill them half full. See, here again, I want to go back to sometimes the way we think, and we all are guilty of that. I'm guilty of that too, that we just settle for just enough. When Jesus says, fill the jars, and they filled them to the brim, and so I, I want you to break out of a poverty mentality. Poverty isn't just money. Poverty is this mentality that things are always going to be broken. You're always going to have a broken car. You know, and people don't think about poverty. You always think about not having money, but people don't even have a car mm -hmm. or people have broken down cars or you have broken down uh, homes or roofs or whatever it is. It's time we break out of poverty mentality. You don't have to live in 
the hood forever. You don't have to live in the projects forever. You don't have to live on disability forever. You don't have to. You, we've got to break out of poverty mentality. If we want to see the blessings of God overtake us, then we've got to stop thinking like we're poor thinking that we're always going to have broken down cars or this or that. We've got to start seeing ourselves with more than enough. We need to start expecting the blessing of the Lord to overtake us. The Bible even says that the blessings will hunt you down and overtake you. Yep. And, you know, we, and again, you know, we serve a God of overflow, a God of more than enough, a God of peace, a God of joy. He's yep. the Prince of Peace, you know, to be... I, for me personally, I can't stand strife. I don't like to be amongst strife where people are bickering and fighting and, you know, and attitudes. I, I, that's something I don't like is people with attitudes. And I know we all have our moments, but you know what? We need to treat one another with respect. We need to love one another. And it, just because you don't agree with everything I do or say doesn't give you a right to disrespect me or vice versa for you too. So, but we need to change the way we think. That's the beginning of now faith. You know, because if you think you're never going to have a breakthrough, that's not faith. That's a lack of faith. But if I begin to think about, yeah, I'm breaking through. I, I, I thank you, Lord. I'm, I can see the finish line and I'm going to hit that finish line. I'm going to cross that finish line, whatever that means to you. And we were talking about our children. You know, I, I'm declaring over our children success. I'm declaring over our children that they will serve the Lord with all their heart. I'm declaring right now what the world says about our children is not what the Lord says about our children. That these children are his children. And the Lord has blessed us with the children so that we can direct them, that we can pray for them. They may not listen to everything that we say, as some children don't, but you can declare over them, Lord, I thank you that this my child hears your voice. They may not listen to my voice, but they listen to your voice and they follow your instruction. I thank you, Lord. I'm going to continue to pray for my children. I'm going to continue to pray for that person by faith. Now Amen. faith. I have faith. Things are changing on their behalf. So let's go on. It said, so, um, so Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars of wa with water. So they filled them to the brim. And it says here, then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. So they filled the jars with water. Mary needs wine. She doesn't need water. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is giving instruction, and they're following the instruction. There's another part of this right here. They're following his instruction. A lot of us wonder why we're not seeing our breakthrough or our blessing when the Lord is giving us instruction, and we don't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, your, that step of faith can cause you to, to, for things to change in your situation. Well, I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel like encourage anybody. But you know what? The Lord is leading you to encourage them. You you know what? That could open your door for your blessing. Well, I don't need encouragement. Well, that may not be what you're going to get anyway, but if you're obedient to what the Lord tells you, it'll open the door for your blessing or your breakthrough. I find it interesting that uh, Mary, that uh, she first saw this where they were running out of wine and, and she to uh, initiative to do something about it, where the uh, the uh, the master of the banquet, uh, like it's, he probably didn't even know what was going on. <laughs> no, <laughs> but you know what it is too is that the Lord. I would say, you know, God is using this. This is the first miracle that Jesus performed. Uh -huh. So God's plan was that Mary would take notice of this, so that the Lord would begin the miracle working um, works that he did, does, and did and does. So, but you see how behind the scenes, I may see something that the, maybe the enemy is attacking you or is uh, going to attack you, and I might see it in the spirit realm, but you haven't seen it yet, and I begin to pray for you. Lord, I just feel like right now Ricky needs a hedge of protection around him. I'm going to pray a hedge of protection. Ricky has no clue about it. 
But the Lord has revealed that to me, and I'm standing in the gap for him, and I'm praying for him, and I'm believing that the Lord's going to protect him and keep the devil from uh, doing what the devil wanted to do. So that's why we have to be aware of our surroundings. We need to have an ear to the Lord so he can reveal to us, um, you know, how to prevent the devil from hurting people. Amen? Mm -hmm. Or whatever it is. It says, so he says, then he's told them to draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though his servants who had drawn the water knew. So they, the servants, isn't this interesting? So they draw water out of the jar, and then on their way to their master, you know, when they get up there, the master tastes the water that's been turned into wine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and it says he did not realize what it come, where it come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. So they're watching this all taking place. And then it goes, then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Every, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheapest wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now or best to last. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that we're in that season that the Lord has saved the best for last. Yes. Yes. For now. Yes. You know, with everything going on in the world and all the craziness going on in the world and our nation and stuff, you know what? God ain't done. What he did back then, he'll do now. He's the God the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe it just opens up the way for God to show up and show out. Because everyone's putting their faith in their technology. They're putting their faith in this and that and themselves. But you know what? There comes a time that, that your faith in you and that stuff won't work. And it doesn't work, period. But you know what? Once you start realizing it can only be Jesus that does it, then all of a sudden you go, wow, yep, my faith is in him, not in what I think I can do. So go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. Okay, I'm thinking about the service that, they were commanded to take the mm -hmm. water in the pot and serve to the king. And they had to be obedient. And what, what would happen if they weren't obedient or if they didn't believe? They had to have believed mm. and shared faith that he could do it. Well, and you're right. They're following the instruction, number one. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they don't have a total clue of what's going on, mm -hmm. but they're getting, okay, you know, uh, all right, we're going to go fill these jars and this and that. And, and you know, they but they realize they fill those jars with water. Right. And the master of the banquet is drinking wine. You know, whether they saw that maybe they saw the wine already in the cup on the way when they, you know, took him. I don't know. But obviously that the Lord is using this as a an example of faith, as a yeah. teaching of faith, that what he did for them, he can do for you. And it's material. It's water you can touch. It's wine that you can touch and drink. So it, it's a thing that happened in the spirit realm, but it's coming out in the natural. Well, if you need a breakthrough in your finances, that's something you can touch, right? Mm -hmm. Well, water turned into wine. Mm -hmm. It's you can touch. Well, I need healing in my body. Well, it's something in the natural. My, my liver or whatever it is, it's a natural thing. My foot, my arm, whatever it is, you can, you feel it, you touch it, you live with it every day. So the Lord, they're showing us here in the scripture, it, it's a, he's working on a natural thing. It's happening in the, it's spiritual, but it's coming into the natural where your, your five senses can participate in it. And, and so nothing is too hard for God. And I, I want to talk about our children again. You're praying for your child, and it looks impossible. But for God, all things are possible. For those who believe, nothing is impossible. So we we have to believe your situation isn't too hard for God. Mm -hmm. Have faith that he will move in your situation. He will give you instruction in what to do. He will show you how to walk this out like he did with the servants. They walked it out in yeah. front of them. And so nothing is impossible with God. So let's go on a little bit further. And he says, everyone brings out the choice wines. And then he says, but you have saved the best for now or for last. This, uh, the first of the miraculous signs Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. 
He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. So now we're talking about the servants, but what about the disciples? Mm -hmm. They're participating in this. Yeah. And again, it, it says the disciples put their faith in Jesus. Now let's take another look at this. I wonder if the, even the servants knew any of this. We're reading about them. Mm -hmm. They may not have known any of this. They may not have known the water and the wine. They're just being obedient. Mm -hmm. But it's the disciples who are watching this. They're from seeing the whole big picture. The, the servants may have just been the pawns in the game. They may not even know anything about it. But the Lord used them to reveal his glory to the disciples. And we're reading about it today. How many centuries have people read this story and their faith has grown in it? You know, so again, you may be used and maybe you don't even know how the Lord's using you to build somebody else's faith because it isn't for you to know. It's not for you. It's for them. So don't think that you don't aren't going to be used and not know about it either. Just be obedient. You know, calling somebody, encouraging somebody or saying hello to somebody at the store or showing them when everybody else, if you ever get in one of these long lines where people are getting frustrated and they want to talk about it and they'll like you're standing behind them and they'll turn to you and they want you to participate in their frustration and their murmur and complaining. And I just usually just smile because number one, I want to get through this line. And if I'm murmuring and complaining, the Lord isn't going to bless me to, or have this line move any faster. It could cause the line to move even slower. So I've learned through the years, it's best just to smile and keep my mouth shut. Don't participate in the grumbling. It can hamper your blessing or your breakthrough. Amen? So in James, in, in our sheet here, James 2.22, and it says here, it says, you see that his faith and his actions were working together. This is talking about you have faith, and, you know, faith without works is dead, is the scripture, this um, is talking about, it says, you see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And talking about the story, water and the wine. It, they had action, they had faith, you know, they had, they had to, you know, use their faith um, like Mary did. She used her faith and told the servants, do what he tells you to do. And they did what they were told to do. And because of all this worked out together, each one worked, did their part, we saw the results of the wine being, your water being turned into wine. Mm -hmm. So you might have faith for something, but what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, um, you know, maybe it's, and I talk about this a lot, whether, whether it's depression. Well, I believe in God to break this depression off of me, but what are you doing about it? You know, whether you go see a doctor, whether you get medicine, whatever. You, but, you know, you can do something about it. Get out of bed. Well, I can't get out of bed. It's just too hard. Well, then start somewhere. If you, if you can't get out of bed, then sit up on the edge of the bed. Put your feet on the floor. Start there. Mm -hmm. Then if you got to lay back down, lay back down. Do it again. And then after a while, then stand up. Mm -hmm. Sit back down. Lay back down. You do a little bit more each time. That's your faith working. Faith. You're walking by faith. You're putting action with your faith because you want to be set free of depression. Um, whether you need a job. You know, what are you doing about it? Well, I'm praying about it. But are you going and putting applications out? Are you researching? Are you searching? Are you doing something? You, you put your action with faith. And whatever you have a need of, Put action with it. Ask the Lord, how do I walk this out? And he'll show you. Let's go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Let me get there. Verse 1. 5, verse 1. I think I'm there. It says, it says, one day as Jesus was standing uh, by the lake with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, 
he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught his the people from the boat. Now, was it by chance that he got into Peter's boat? Was it by accident that he got into Peter's boat? No. There was a plan. God had a plan. Mm -hmm. The same for you. Let Jesus into your boat. Don't think that you're on this earth for just to take up space or there's no purpose in your life. You got to stop that. Uh -huh. I'm going to talk to somebody right now. Stop saying there's no purpose in your life. God has put you on this earth for a reason. Your purpose could be different than my purpose, and chances are it is different. But the purpose is that we're here to be a light where there's darkness. We're here to do the best that we can, and the only way we can do the best that we can is putting our faith in Jesus. He gets you through. Stop murmuring complaining about your situation and start talking faith. Start believing God for a change in your situation. Well, nobody will help me. Well, Jesus is your help. Jesus can do it better than anybody else can do. Jesus knows you inside and out. Jesus has, knows exactly what you need. Jesus knows the exact breakthrough that you need at the exact time. He knows how much you've gone through this situation. He knows everything. So just because somebody else won't help you, you need to put your faith in Jesus. He will help you through. So anyway, that's my little sideline there. <laughs> so he gets into the boat of Peter, and then he says, put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the, into the deep waters and let down the nets for a catch. And remember, they were just cleaning their nets on the show sure when jesus got in so they had let's go on i don't want to get ahead of the scripture here simon answered master we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything so you know he was tired wasn't he he worked all night in trying to catch some fish and it, they cleaned their nets have already put up their nets now it's probably a chore in that alone and then jesus says, put out into the deep but Simon says, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Hear what I'm saying, y'all. You've been standing. You've been believing. You've done everything you possibly can do, and you haven't seen the results yet. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. So Peter says, okay, Lord, we've worked hard all night. We haven't caught anything. But because you tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. That could be for somebody listening right now. You've done it all, but just do it one more time because this could be your day of breakthrough. This could be exactly what causes your breakthrough to take place. It says, when they had done so, see, when they did it, there's that faith and action. You know, there's, we're talking about walking by faith tonight with action. It says, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. What if Peter had said, no, I'm too tired. I'm not doing this. We didn't catch anything. There, it just It's not going to happen. That wouldn't have been faith. But he did what Jesus told him to do. And because of that, they caught such a big load of fish, not only for their boat, but for their partner's boat. And they filled both boats so full that the boats began to sink. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, it's time for our boats to start sinking, y'all. And I'm talking with blessing. I'm not talking yes. with horrible stuff. I'm telling you right now, I'm believing that the Lord is bringing blessings your way and my ways mm -hmm. that it's going to cause our boats to sink, yes. so to speak. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It says, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Now, I want you to hear this. It was because of what Jesus did. This is before Peter put his faith in Jesus, but because Jesus gave him instruction, he followed the instruction and he received a blessing. That touched 
Peter's heart and that Peter saw himself, uh, you know, as basically as he basically had a change of heart. He, he's basically repenting. Go away, Lord. I'm a sinful man. And it says, for he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that had taken. And so were James and John and the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they put their boats on the shore, left everything and followed him. Because they experienced a breakthrough. This is what's going to win people to Jesus. When we start talking to people about faith and start praying for people, encouraging people, don't give up. So when they get their breakthrough, they will begin to say, this Jesus thing works. Your prayers work. You know, well, we can't always say when somebody, you know, I see this on Facebook. Hey, y'all, would you pray for my mother? She's in the hospital. And you'll see people say, praying, praying, praying. I usually say, I'll pray right there. Heavenly Father, I thank you for touching their mother. Because you know what it's doing? So when she gets a touch, Jesus will get glorified. Because they heard the prayer. They saw the prayer then. But if I say, well, I'll pray for you. How do they know I'm praying for them? How do they know that, hey, maybe it was just a lucky chance that she got healed. But you know what? I prayed. You pray so that they can hear it. So that when it happens, when it comes to pass, that they can say, wow, I remember you praying for me. And because you prayed for me, I got healed. I got my breakthrough. That's what brings glory to God. And so let's go on. Let's go to Rome. Well, you, we're not going to turn there, but Romans ten seventeen says, so faith comes from what is heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. But here in a different uh, version, it says, so faith comes from what is heard and what is heard comes through the message about Christ. So here we're reading scripture about the fishermen obeying the Lord and they got a big haul of fish. We read the story about the wine, uh, the water turning into wine. That should build our faith. Hey, these are natural things. The fish, the, how did they get into that net? Jesus said, throw the net over to the other side. They cast their net like they normally do, and they didn't catch anything the night before, but because Jesus told them to cast their net and they obeyed him, they followed his instruction. They saw the results of the nets almost breaking because of the fish. What happened? How did the fish get there? The Lord got, led them up to that net. I can, I can imagine seeing Peter after this just happened. Uh, they're coming back to shore. And they said, they went, did they go out to the deep to fish? Yeah, they went out yeah. to the deep. I could see them catching those fish and then they're coming back to shore. And I could see Peter just, as they're coming back, I see Peter just laying back and reason, trying to reason it in himself. So, what just happened? Yeah. You know, what, what, who is this man? You know, and it's like, how long it would have took for them to get back to shore? Maybe two, three hours. And I could see him just, just in the basement, yeah. you know, just. How did this happen? How did this happen? Yeah. I mean, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a miracle. Yeah. It was a miracle. They'd, and, you know, that would have been a jolt. You know, you've worked all night fishing. You didn't catch anything. You clean your net. You're tired. And then all of a sudden you get this big fit. And that was their livelihood, how they made money, too. And all of a sudden you're on your way going back to shore going, wow, like you said. you know. And then you probably don't feel as tired as you did before you went out there. It's because you experienced a miracle. You experienced a breakthrough. You experienced following the instruction of the Lord. And as we're reading about this tonight, we're talking about that. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God in Christ. That's what builds our faith. Tonight, as we're reading scripture, as we're discussing it, I'm declaring that your faith is growing, that whatever your situation is, whatever your circumstance is, it is changing now. By faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's what faith is. It's substance. Well, go to Mark chapter 8, verse 22. Praise the Lord. I'm getting something out of this. I can read the same passage over and over and get something new every single time. It builds my faith. It stirs me up to say, yes, when I want to just say, 
you know, throwing the towel or whatever it is, you know, it, it rejolts me. It rejuvenates me to say, oh, yeah, look what the Lord did for them. He'll do for me, too. And so in Romans 8, verse 22, um, let me get there real quick. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thought you said Mark. Oh, Mark, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, Mark 8.22. No wonder I couldn't find it. Thank you. I stand corrected. I'm going, wait a second. I, this doesn't look the right. See, I can, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> See, I can make mistakes too. But I didn't lose my salvation. I had to say Mark 8.22. Thank you, Lord. Isn't it nice to have fun at Bible study or at church? You can laugh and smile. So Mark 8, 22, they came to Bethesda and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. It says, when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you, uh, do you see anything? Now here again, it sounds bizarre, doesn't it? Number one, they begged Jesus to heal this blind man. And so Jesus takes him by the hand and he walks him out of the village, away from everybody. And then he spits in his eyes. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, that's kind of gross. But here, you know, Jesus, it's this walking it out. You know, Jesus could have just said, be healed, and he would have been healed. But there's a process he's doing. There's a process in this. It says, when he had spit on the man's eye, eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. So he saw the people with, you know, they were looking like trees that all he could see. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Remember, Jesus didn't stop because the healing wasn't completed. Sometimes we stop right before we get our healing or breakthrough. Well, I'm good. I only limp a little bit. I don't want to limp anymore. You you don't stop at just limping a little bit. Start go all the way. Lord, I thank you that you're healing my foot that I won't limp anymore or my hip or whatever it is. I want the whole miracle. I don't want part of a miracle. I want my whole miracle. And he says, "Once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open, his sight restored, and he saw everything clearly." See, if he would have stopped in part of the healing, all he would have seen is people look like trees, mm -hmm. you know, but now he can see clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, do not go into the village. There must have been a reason why he didn't send him in the village. Maybe he would have went in there. The people wouldn't have believed him. People would have talked him out of his healing. You know, you never know. There was a reason why Jesus said, don't go back into the village. Just go home. You know, Receive your breakthrough. Sometimes you can share your breakthrough with somebody. Sometimes you can share your vision with somebody, your dreams. And then there's times that pe the Lord won't let you share. And there's people, you don't want to share things that people don't have faith for because you're walking this out and you're trusting God for your breakthrough. And you might share that with somebody and say, oh no, God can't do that. Where did you hear that? Did you have you been listening to that preacher on television, that faith preacher? Well, yeah, I've been listening to that pre faith preacher on television, but also I read the scripture, and the word says that by his stripes I we shall be made whole. Then that I believe in the scripture, or just like this man, I'm believing for my whole, my complete healing, not just for part of my healing. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be careful who you share with, mm -hmm. and because somebody can talk you out of your breakthrough. You know, and I like being around faith-filled people, especially when I'm believing God for something. Now, I can be around people who are faith-filled people, too, but I can also share with them, look what the Lord did for me. You know, after the fact. Sometimes you have to share after the fact with somebody because they'll mess you up. If they don't have the faith and they're going to talk against your blessing, or your breakthrough, They can, like I said, they can talk you out of receiving it. You know, there's times to saying God gives you wisdom and what to say and what not to say. So you got to be careful about that. Um, in Hebrews 11, 6, it says here, it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God. This is more than positive thinking. It's faith we're talking about. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. 
Well, you need to believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God is a rewarder. God, we serve a God of rewards, y'all. <laughs> you know, it's funny how people portray God to be stingy, you know, or mad or angry or this or that or, or because of what you did and what you didn't do is the reason why he's not blessing you. He blesses you for so he'll be glorified. Yeah. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have your breath. He's waiting for you to walk by faith. He's waiting for you to believe that he can do this for you as he did for somebody else. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. And then in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. I love this version. I think it's the Amplified. It says, For we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promise, promises. Let me read this again. For we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. So when I'm walking by faith and not by sight, we quote that a lot. But how are you doing that? I'm living my life, being consistent in my confidence of what God said he'll do, he will do. I'm confident that he says, he promised me in his word that he would do this for me. I'm confident that he is going to do it. I'm believing it and I'm confident it's going to happen. Amen. So tonight, as we're talking about walking by faith, I'm believing you're stirred up tonight. Whatever your situation, your circumstance, I'm confident that you have the faith that God is going to change your situation. I'm confident that I'm going to hear a praise report and how you believe God for to do something and it, he did it. And you are going to be confident from that, that God is able. He's more than able to do whatever you need him to do. Amen. Amen. Because, you know, uh, <clears throat> when Jesus asked the blind man, do you see anything? He could easily says, no, I'm OK. You know, you know. I, I can see, you know, a little, I'm okay. You know, it could have stopped there. Yeah. But, but uh, he told Jesus, uh, you know, he could see just the trees and then Jesus healed. But a lot of people stopped, like you said. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Jesus asked him, can you see? And he said, well, I see, like you said. And, you know, I've heard people through the years say, you know what? I don't want to bother God. Right. He's so busy. God created you. He created everything on this planet. God is able to multitask. He is an expert on multitasking. That he has so many blessings out there. He has so many breakthroughs out there. He wants to take care of his children. You have not because you ask not. You know, and you seek and you find. You knock and the door will be open, he says. And so he's waiting on you to touch him with your faith so that it positions you to receive what he has promised you. God has promised you that he would take care of you. He has promised that he would heal you and he will heal you. You know, there's all these things, but we, again, because it's a lack of, knowledge that we're not receiving what God has promised us. Yeah. We, and we stop short of the trees. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I can see good. Well, what do you see? How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> I, think, you know, yeah. I think you're holding up four. Well, now I'm holding up one. You really need a miracle. You need a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So I pray tonight. Let me pray for you before we leave. Heavenly Father, I thank you that by your spirit tonight, Holy Spirit, you are speaking to us uh, through your word. I thank you that you're stirring us up to believe God for our miracle, for our breakthrough, for bigger and better things that God has in store for each and every one of us. Lord, I thank you, just like the father said to Jesus about his son, help my unbelief. Hallelujah. Help my unbelief. Lord, I thank you that tonight somebody needed to hear that. Lord, that you would help their unbelief, that from now on they would believe you and have faith in you, that you can do all things. 
and you can do all things for them. Yes. And tonight, I thank you that you are the Lord of the breakthrough, and you're breaking through for each and every one listening to my voice right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Can you say amen? amen. Say, I receive. I receive. Say, I believe. And I receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good night, everybody. See you next time.